wounded soldiers to safety. He was fatally wounded by the enemy while attempting to save a third wounded man. Private Johnson was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart on August 21st, 1950. The medal was originally, originally established by General George Washington during the American Revolution. The Purple Heart was formally adopted by the War Department in 1932 and is presented to members of the U.S. military being wounded or killed in any action against the enemy of the United States or as a result of an act of any such enemy or opposing armed force. During segregation, this was one of the few beaches open to the Scambia County's African American community. Shortly after the Korean War, the Sunset Riding Club Incorporated suggested renaming it in honor of Private Johnson's sacrifice. In 1973, this area became part of the Gulf Islands National Seashore, and the name was retained by the National Park Service. Take a look at this beautiful beach in honor of Private Rosemary Johnson. Each year on the first Saturday in May, the Johnson family, the local community, and the park service come together to remember and honor Rosemary Johnson's service and sacrifice to this country. The event is open to the public and all are encouraged to attend and participate. The Park Service has waived all entry fees for the morning of the event in recognition of his sacrifice to his country and his family. I broke down the definition of the word honor. It's the highest respect, the greatest esteem that you can give someone. I broke down the definition of courage. It's doing something in spite of being fearful. And then I wrote down the definition of commitment. Doing what you said you would do long after the feeling you said it in has left. And I thought about Private Johnson. He showed great honor. He was 15 when he enlisted in the U.S. Army. 15. He showed great courage because I can imagine during those times when he was sac uh, saving his, his fellow, um, uh, I can't say shipmates because they weren't shipmates. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. <laughs> soldiers, I can imagine that, that he was doing something in spite of being fearful of his own life, but he did it anyway. He showed great courage. And then he showed commitment right to the very end. After he had saved two, I'm, t I'm telling you, I probably would have stopped at the first one. I don't even know if I had a went, if I would have went for the first one, if I'm being honest. But I probably would have stopped if I, if I got one across. I'm like, okay, I'm good. I did my duty. But he, he did it twice, and he was on his way a third time. He showed commitment to the very end. And so that's why we're here today. We're here to honor him, honor his legacy. Thank you all so much for being here. We want to publicly thank Commissioner Lumen May, Commissioner Burgosh for their support and being here. We want to publicly thank the National Park Service for your gracious um, waiving of the fees and your support of this event. We want to thank all of our volunteers in our community and especially the family. Thank you all for sharing Private Roseman Johnson with us. Now we're going to have the invocation by Reverend Eugene Franklin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to all the ministers here, including Pastor Mary Pop, Pastor of his family. This is a great day. What comes to me today is uh, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and therein. This is a great, great day to feel the Lord. Amen. To feel the spirit that dwells in this place. So I'm asking you to join me in prayer. In my custom and my tradition as a Baptist minister. Heavenly Father, we come once again. Thanking you, Father, for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this event. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this family. And Father, we thank you for the message that you are sending to the life of Private Roseman Johnson. Father, we thank you and ask you to bless all of those, Father, who 
of participating today and all those Father who helped to make this event something that is worthy to be done in your name. Father, we ask you that you will be with us today. You will continue to allow your spirit to dwell with us and you will bless all the participants. Thank you, Father, for the park service. Thank you for the Padilla Key Chamber, Father. Thank you for all the officials, Father, who made this event possible. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we have comments from the National Park Service, Daryl Eccles. So on behalf of the National Park Service, I'd like to welcome you here today to Residence Johnson Beach in Bernardo Key at Gulf Islands National Seashore. I'd like to extend my thanks as well to the Johnson family for the memory of President Johnson alive, and to the Sandia County, especially the County Commissioners Burgosh, Underhill, and May, to the Florida Black Chamber of Commerce, and the staff of the Pequito Key Chamber of Commerce, and to our local Kiwanis, all of whom have worked so hard and contributed to make this event and the things you see here today possible. The National Park Service is often referred to as the keeper of our nation's heritage, the caretaker of those special places that define who we are as a nation and who we are as a people. Today, our national park system has 423 different units. Some of them are very familiar to many of us. Places like Yellowstone, Yosemite, the Grand Canyon, Great Smoky Mountains, and of course, Gulf Islands National Seashore. Our national park system also includes important parts of our history. Some that we celebrate, like Independence Hall in Philadelphia, where the Declaration of Independence was signed. And Thomas Edison's laboratory in New Jersey, where he invented the light bulb. But it also includes some sadder, more sobering places. Places like Manzanar National Historic Site in California, where Japanese Americans were relocated and imprisoned during World War II. Like Little Rock Central High School National Historic Site in Arkansas that represents the struggle for integration of all of our public schools. And the Trail of Tears National Historic Trail that remembers and commemorates the survival of the Cherokee people forcefully removed from their homelands in Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee to live in Indian Territory, now Oklahoma. It is important that we tell these stories too, that we tell the whole story, that we tell it from different perspectives. Only then can we begin to more fully understand our country and who we are as Americans, and only then can we put into proper context the life and actions of someone like Rosamund Johnson and why it was important to name this beach after him. When Rosamund Johnson was 15, he enlisted in the U.S. Army. Marion kind of gave us a little overview of that. He did that to support his family. As a member of the 24th Infantry, stationed in Japan, Johnson and his regiment were some of the first soldiers deployed to fight during the Korean War. As already been mentioned, on July 26, 1950, after Johnson pulled two wounded soldiers to safety during the conflict, he was fatally wounded while attempting to save a third. He was only 17 years old. On August 21, 1950, Johnson was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart Medal for his sacrifice. We honor Private Rosamund Johnson here annually, not just for the actions he took on the battlefield nearly 72 years ago, but also for what those actions represented to the Army and to our country. By the end of the Civil War, over 179,000 African Americans fought for the Union, roughly 10% of the total force. And yet, nearly 100 years later, the courage and valor of African American soldiers were unjustly called into question once again. Just months after Private Johnson's ultimate sacrifice, military leaders requested that the 8th Army disband the all-black 24th Infantry Regiment, Rosamond's former regiment, stating that it had shown itself incapable of carrying out missions expected of an infantry regiment. This ignored the fact that the 24th Infantry Regiment had not been adequately trained or supported by their superiors to succeed instead choosing to judge the unit by the color of their skin. Thankfully, and justifiably, the United States Army re-examined the record of the 24th Infantry Division in, the 19, excuse me, in a 1996 book titled Black Soldiers, White Army. For us at Gulf Islands National Seashore, we know that this beach will continue to serve as a 
place where we can remember Private Rosamond Johnson's life, to understand the injustice of segre segregation, and learn for the betterment and future of our nation. As the superintendent of this incredible National Seashore, I can assure you that the National Park Service will strive to preserve this wonderful beach, support this event, and keep the memory of Rosamond Johnson alive. Thank you.
we have to realize that it is important, uh, even as they pay the ultimate sacrifice and lose their life in service of family, in service of nation, that they're not forgotten. And certainly you're being here today, uh, it, it is an example of how you commemorate, you continually tell the story of the of courageous and heroic actions that one took on one day where thought nothing of itself, but it was all about his family, his nation, and even at that moment, his confidence, he had forgotten everything else. So they're not forgotten. And those of us that know them and know what they did, we will tell the story how they impacted our lives. And certainly we will tell the story about the bravery, the heroism, and also their sacrifice. But one of the things that we will also do is that we will carry those memories in our hearts. And that's where it's, it's honestly and truly commemorated. Because the things that have an impact on you, you will never forget it. As a matter of fact, you can tell it just like it happened yesterday. I find myself talking about some of my high school memories, some of my police department memories, some of my childhood memories, as if they happened just yesterday. So when we commemorate things in our hearts, those things, those people, even though they're not with us, they have a tendency to live on through us. And one of the things I can tell you is we oftentimes will take death as the end of time, but death really is a transition from time to eternity. And one of the things that allows us to participate in eternity, within eternity is when we continue to tell the story stories that inspire. I found Rosemary Johnson's story to be very inspirational to me as a young police officer of the city of Pensacola Police Department. Out of all the times I had come to Johnson's speech, I never knew the story until somebody took the time to tell me the story. So here's a 15-year-old that goes in to take care of his family and then to represent his, his country in battle. And in two years, he does something without even thinking twice about it, because he was committed to the oath that he had taken. And when I looked at 17 doing something so impactful that even today we're still talking about it, I still find it inspirational to me. And I'm hoping and praying today that um, our young people, I know sometimes their attention spans are very short, but take the 10 to 15 minutes to tell them the story about the heroism of Rosemary Johnson. And I always like to today acknowledge um, those of you who have lost loved ones um, in public service, those who lost their lives in the line of duty, um, those who have lost their lives serving their country. You know, the hurt, the pain runs deep. And no matter how much time has passed, um, there's no word of condolences uh, that can adequately to soul of grief survive. So while grief from loss may uh, change over the course of the years, uh, it never leaves us. So that means we have to find some kind of way to deal with it. So what better way to deal with it than to commemorate the life, the story of an American hero. And so every year in the month of May, we find ourselves reflecting on the courageous acts and a bravery in the face of danger of an American hero. Yes, that's right. Army Private Roseman Johnson Jr. And you know, and this this young man, uh, after listing in, in in the army at the age of 15, uh, going into combat, I mean, it took uh, not long to make a decision to go after and save. I mean, you hear it over and over again, but it should help you to recognize the power of a sacrifice that was made out of love. There's a scripture that said, there's no greater love than this, than a man that will lay down his life for his friend. And you know, sometimes when you lay it on the line, it's not because you're doing it for the recognition of others. You're not doing it thinking that I'll be a hero. It's a selfless, it's a thoughtless action that you take knowing in your heart with conviction that it is the right thing to do. So we honor 
as well as we mourn Roseman at the day that he left us. And we mourn him now because he took it upon himself to serve faithfully and to, to fully pay the ultimate price. What Roseman Johnson did at 17 is commemorable uh, in this nation where there aren't many who would put on a uniform and accept the same risk. This alone makes him a hero, worthy of being remembered, not only now, but forever. And we will never forget Pilot, Ruth, and Johnson Jr. The Johnson family, you are part of a club of families who have lost loved ones in service. You are part of a club that no one will ask or want to be asked to join. Roseman and the Johnson family understood and accepted this risk when Roseman volunteered to serve his country. This was nothing that could fully prepare for, you know, the, the Johnson family for the knock on the door that, that delivered the notice that Roseman had lost his life in battle. There was nothing that could prepare them for it. And I know even today, when we hug our, our young people and they're leaving, we know the risk, we know the danger. Anyone that serves in public service, there's a danger today that they face of uh, delivering that service to the public. So I believe that each of us here today understands this and that this is more than just the news headline uh, honoring the military personnel. This is actually uh, a tragic loss of a hero and that we're honoring him today because his life was cut short in service of his country. So today I honor Rosalind Johnson Jr. I honor his family. I honor his um, the men and women who serve today. We have served um, this country. Uh, I honor you all today because you all today are making not only this a beautiful scenery, but one of the world's beautiful locations uh, to vacation, but you're making it a beautiful scenery because we are all have come together to commemorate the life of American hero. So I honor you all today and I ask God to continue to bless you and hopefully this day will inspire young people as they endeavor to serve family, serve country, <coughs> and will serve with the same commitment, the same love and compassion for faith and a true and living God because I believe if God be for us, who can be against us? So God bless you all. God bless America. Thank you.
person in Escambia County not know why this jewel? I mean, this is world class. World yeah. class. <coughs> How <coughs> could <coughs> we not know? How could something so meaningful have become put to the side? On a side, not much bigger than this, if I remember correctly. Y'all remember that? That sat right out there. And I did know that I had seen a larger sign in my past. You know, I kind of remember that there was a brown sign once that had this man's name on it. I didn't know why, but now I did. And I felt like it was so important for children that were growing up in this community to know something so powerful. Because when we know something about where we came from, we have something to hold on to. When times get really tough and you realize, you know, we come from some good stuff, and let's be the good stuff we come from. And I feel like that's probably how that became so emblazoned in my heart. And I cannot take credit for what's going on right now. I'll just tell you because I heard a story and a and a um, brand was put on my life. I had the good fortune, thanks to my dear friend Eugene Franklin, and I call him my mentor too, because he introduced me to the Johnson family. I think he might have seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. I remember sitting in Mama Johnson's living room with every one of her children except Rosemont. Just picture that. I got to be in Mama Johnson's living room with all her children. And let me just tell you something. Those faces looking at me, <laughs> that was kind of like, <laughs> just a little bit like this. <laughs> and I was thinking, yeah, I understand, you know, I don't look like you. <laughs> I didn't come from here. And People have said they would do something and they haven't done it. People have made some effort and they dropped the ball. And I knew that. I wasn't going to drop the ball. I wasn't real sure I was going to hold on to the ball, but I wasn't going to drop it. So my promise in that living room was I recognize that a wrong has been done. And if I can in any way help to right that wrong, which in my opinion was a little bitty sign about like this, sitting in that pointing towards this walkway, that that just wasn't sufficient. And that whatever way I might help get that man's name in front of this park is what I would do. And I couldn't do that by myself, thanks to the National Seashore and the National Park Service. And years and years of incremental shift, things changed. It was really fun because I remember sitting with Eugene Franklin and I had a wish list. That monument that used to sit behind the bathrooms here, that was put out here in the 90s, kind of wanted it right there. Wanted something out there that would tell the story so everybody in their flip flops going back and forth here would have a chance. And in fact, they'd have to try not to own the story. See that? <laughs>
embracing her sweet and precious Rosamond Johnson and seeing that sign. I wanted her to get to see it before she passed away, and it didn't happen. But it happened the day she went to heaven. So, we were supposed to reflect on some past. I'll have to tell you, probably one of the most meaningful ones to me was when Mama Johnson started talking one time. Were you all here? I know some of you were here. Raise your hand if you remember. And she started talking about when Rosemond said, Mama, I want to join the Army. You see, he was too young to join the Army. She had to sign something. She had to sign a waiver. Anybody here 15 years old? Raise your hand. Anybody here less than 15 years old? Raise your hand. Yeah, I see it. Uh -huh. Okay, so there, here he is telling his mama he wants to join the Army because he wants to support her. He's been to a rally. He's heard all these wonderful things. He wants to be one of those guys. She said, let's pray about it. I remember her saying, he said, okay, Mama, but I want to join the Army. But we're going to pray about it, okay? He came back, Mama, I prayed about it, and I want to join the Army. She said, well, let's pray about it. Well, this went on and on. I'm not sure how many days they were praying. I think she was praying that some 15-year-old thought would float, float through his head and, and his attention would be taken away from this concept of being in the the army, you know, she was trying. until he walked up and said, Mama, I've been praying to God. Do you remember how she said it? God. <laughs> God said I was supposed to join the army. And she was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? When I heard that story, my kid was just about that age. I just couldn't even imagine. And I couldn't imagine a couple of years later getting that knock on the door and having your heart spill out on the floor and never, ever, ever again being able to put it back in your chest. I just want to thank you all for being here. I thank you for helping to continue the memories. I want to thank my precious friend, Eugene Franklin, for enriching my life and my soul and my spiritual being by being my mentor and by helping me not say other uh, things that a girl like me from where I came from shouldn't say, you know, helping so many ways. Okay. You hadn't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is something that I designed a few years ago that I thought was a way for young people to be able to walk away from these events and forever remember the story of Rosamond Johnson. This has his likeness on the front. This was his portrait from um, when he enlisted in the service. And by the way, he was private first class Rosemont Johnson Jr. Let's, that's private first class. And his story is on the back of these medallions. So we've made it a practice for young people that are in attendance or participate in this service to have one of these so that they can go forward and tell their story. And maybe one day when they're old and gray, they'll remember this silly woman at the beach they gave them this medal and told them a story. And they'll go out and maybe be somebody as heroic and magnificent as Rosamond Johnson Jr. So if you would please, if you consider yourself a young person, would you please come forward come on, and receive one of these medals? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
being contagious. <laughs> kind of makes you want to go out and do something. You know what? <laughs> Just go do something. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something. Now I'm going to ask Commissioner Lumen Bay, who grew up with the family, and always, whenever we ask for donations for him to help us to put, pull this event off, he always graciously, graciously donates um, funds, because you all know it takes money to do stuff, right? And this commissioner doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk along with Commissioner Burgard, Commissioner Underhill. Um, so I'm going to bring him up and ask the family representative, Ms. Pam Johnson Glenn, to come up, and we're going to read the proclamation. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> First, let me just say thank you for being here. First, let me thank you for all of the people who stood in all the way and served our country because we're here. And for Rosamund Johnson, I, I, I certainly could not stand here without recognizing Mama Johnson, Frank and Reese, and Richard, and this entire family. Because this family is my family. And the Bible says, a wise father leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. And it's not necessarily money, but the great legacy of the Johnson family. Brother, it's feeding families down on bail money and bill, the bill. Yes. I mean, brother, it's going to Tom Chapel and making sure that there's a junior choir. Or uh, uh, brother, it's just Mama Johnson uh, opening the doors after somebody was leaving the Saber Club to get a bite to eat um, when they were leaving the four squares. And so we know that all those things existed. And for me, what an honor to know this family. And growing up in this family, I saw greatness. I didn't know Rosemont at first was a brother of Raymond Reese. Um, if anybody knew that Raymond Reese was like a preacher, I mean, he could cuss like a preacher. And if Raymond Reese was here, <laughs> Raymond Reese would be still in the show. Uh, but uh, for Mother Johnson, Rosemont Johnson Sr., uh, to be able to impart this to this man, this great man, to this great family. We say to these children, let the legacy continue. Let this continue for generations and generations and generations. Because history will record this as not only a great day for Rosemont Johnson, but it will record this family as a great family for this community, this state, and this country. Thank you so much. And at this time, I, I get the opportunity to be here every year and, and to support. Uh, it's not my district. I, I told him here. I said I was afraid to come to Benito. I got Commissioner Begos on the phone the whole way, so I wouldn't be arrested. My mama reminded me. Yeah, I couldn't go to Pensacola Beach. She said, the only beach we could go to uh, back then, it was at the Colored Beach. I said, Mama, it don't look that way now, I'm nervous. She said, call the mission of God, because you know what will happen if they pull you over. You'll be on the front cover of a paper. So I called him and his brother, the judge. We have Judge McGod now. So I called the judge and the commissioner from this district. I said, because you know what they'll do to a black Democrat in <laughs> Virginia. So at this time, we're going to give the proclamation on a commissioner we got. I don't know what to say after that kind of an introduction. <laughs> I was I was uh, I was honored to be invited here, and, and I will tell you this is District One now. It's a new thing, um, but I grew up fishing on these beaches, and I, and I was speaking with Lumen right before the uh, ceremony started. And I told him my dad brought me out here, taught me how to fish. Brought my brother Gary out here, taught us how to fish, and he always told us this is Johnson's Beach. But here's something that's very true, and I, I'm almost ashamed to admit it. I never knew the story until I became a grown man and moved back to this. So honored to be here, so humbled to be here. So fantastic to see so many people here paying honor to this great man. His story gives me chills. So uh, I'm honored. Lumen, thank you for the honor of bringing me here. And I, I'm going to ask, even though it's my district and I'm the chairman, I'm going to ask that Lumen may read this, read this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Where's the lack of Tyler Rosemont Johnson? An African American hero and the first Hispanic County resident to die in the Korean War will be commemorated Saturday, May 7th at Johnson Beach in Bedillo Key, Florida. Whereas after joining the military, he was just 15 years old, Private Johnson Jr. was killed at the age of 17 during the Korean conflict. Whereas after carrying 200, two wounded men to safety on the enemy, enemy fire, Private Johnson was killed going back to save the third. But no. Whereas Private Johnson received a Purple Heart on August 21st, 1950. Whereas Pensacola beaches were racially segregated at the time of Private Johnson's death, Gulf Beach area was a popular area for African Americans after the Korean country. The county owned recreational area was renamed Rosemont Johnson Beach to honor a fallen hero. 
when Rosalind Johnson Lee became a part of the Gulf Island National Seashore in 1973, and a permanent monument in honor of Private Johnson was erected in 1996. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commission of the Stanley County does hereby proclaim May 7, 2022, as Rosalind Johnson Beach Day in his County County in honor and memory of Private Rosalind Johnson, who made the ultimate sacrifice for all of our freedom. Board of County Commissioners, Jeff Josh Chandler, Dexter Romeo, Vice Chairman, Newman J. May District 3, Robert Denny District 4, Stephen Fair District 5. Thank you for this place. Thank you so much.
and we want to thank all of you and thank him for the service he gave and for the memories we have. Thank you. Before many of us here today were even born into this world, this soldier stood to watch. When the storm clouds of war have brazened the horizon over history, this soldier stood to watch. I can imagine Rosamond up at night looking at the stars while his family was right here in Pensacola, Florida, needing his guidance, needing his assurance, needing his hand to hold to let them know everything is going to be all right. But yet, he stood the watch. He stood the watch so that me and you and our families could sleep safely at night knowing that Private Rosamond Johnson was standing to watch. We are here today to say, Soldier, the watch stands relieved. Relieved by our fellow countrymen who are serving right now in the armed forces of the United States of America because of your guidance, your wisdom, your bravery, your courage, your valor, your ultimate sacrifice. Soldier, you stand relieved. We have the watch.
Pledge for attending, and it's our responsibility to carry the legacy on by telling one person about Private Rosemont Johnson's story and bringing someone with you next year. Same time, same place, first Saturday in May 2023, we'll be right here at 10 a.m. honoring his memory and his legacy once again. We hope to see you there. God bless you all. Johnson Beach at the uh, seashore Perdido Key in Perdido Key, Florida. We're here with, uh, uh, what is your name, sir? I'm sorry. I am Eugene Franklin. Eugene Franklin. He's going to talk a little bit about uh, the event that transpired today and what part did he play in it as well, okay? Eugene. Uh, my name is Eugene Franklin. I'm the president of the Florida Black Chamber of Commerce and formerly one of the founders of the Gulf Coast African American Chamber. Oh, okay. And one of our precepts was the using culture as a catalyst for economic development. And the redevelopment of Belmont Villas uh, project is where I learned about Roseman Johnson uh -huh. and I learned about the story of Johnson Beach. So in that process of marketing the assets of Pensacola from the black perspective, and encouraging those who may not have heard of Pensacola at that time to exactly. come and experience. And this beach was one of those destinations that I used. Belmont de Villas and Johnson Beach okay. were the two driving catalysts that I used to market Pensacola. The event was awesome today. That event was in the making and started in the late 90s. Is in where we were working with then Commissioner Marie Young, Honorable uh, Joe Heron, and another friend of mine who then uh, was working with the Chamber of Tourism, Hank Harris, and we decided to come here and primarily the bus that we saw that was behind the back uh -huh. was touching and continuing inappropriate in a place and that this beach and the name of Johnson Beach should be something that should be revered and should be preserved in our culture. And I used the term culture. Yeah. And so, so then we did from back that. there to here. Yeah. Yes. And it's culture. beautiful, really beautiful. Yes. And and you couldn't even get to it behind the bathroom. You had to walk in. It's up against the wall. People would not see it. Since we're live feed, let's go over here so we can show the uh, viewers. You ain't got to go nowhere. You don't have to go nowhere. I guess later on they're going to take the reef out, out and uh, place it out in the water. But this is so the history of Johnson Beach. This was the, this was to make the, Stand in front of it for this me, this here effort was an effort to bring the story alive. Okay. And so again, we wanted. Working with different superintendents and, and drivers and different partners, what this meant. Uh, this here was something that we had commissioned so that it, it could tell the story. It would have to be here for that story. And it's been fitting to look on the background behind Johnson Beach. It's a beautiful beach. I mean, all the beach is a booming with people. They're having a wonderful time. So the event is over with. But you can still come uh, to Johnson Beach. They still got food uh, that they're going to be serving. Uh, the weather is beautiful. So definitely come and still honor uh, Roseman Johnson.
for all that he had done. His, he sacrificed his life. He sacrificed his life. Exactly. So, he also Thank you so much. Now we're going to talk with um, Chief of Police. Thank you so much. Chief, how you doing? I'm doing well. Can you come over here and talk a little bit? Uh, you were on the program to speak yes. today. How did you enjoy it? I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I got a three-year-old and six-year-old with me today. And so guess what we're going to get quizzed on? Johnson B. On Johnson B. <laughs> Who's it named after? Yes. Since they like to quiz me on stuff. Okay, okay. You know, we're going to quiz them to make sure they learn something. And that's one of the things, uh, the powerful thing about sharing the story, is you got to make sure learning is taken away. Yeah. You know, I think our, a lot of our, uh, our elders in our family, uh, they told us things over and over again, and we would get tired of hearing it. To the point we, we could actually recite it ourselves. Yeah, so how did so, you enjoy the uh, uh, ceremony today? Oh, it was great. Uh, every year it seems like it gets better and better, and it seems like the attendance gets stronger and stronger. And so I know that Roseman would have been happy. I know that his mother um, would have been happy uh, just to see it going like it did today. And, exactly. Like I said, I was very, every, every part everybody played from my elected officials down to those who volunteered. Awesome. Yeah, it was, and it was emotional. Yes, very because, emotional. Because uh, this young man again gave his life uh, uh, in duty. Right. And right. Uh, one of the uh, uh, family members said in question that yeah, the, uh, two of the soldiers or one of the soldiers were uh, uh, not African American, but they were white. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that, but it did not matter. But because of his characteristics and what he felt. He's going to save a life. It wasn't right. about the color. It was about life. And, and when I talk to a lot of veterans that have actually served on the battlefield, I say, when you're out there, I don't, you know, you should, no matter where you came from, exactly. you may have came from a very uh, discriminatory uh, area of the country, but when you're out there on the battlefield, we're all in this together. If we don't work together, we won't survive. Exactly. And even today, the, the honor guards, you saw them uh, representative of the diversity that exists in our community. Exactly. And so that's why I say from everything from start to finish, uh, it was all inclusive it was and it was wonderful. very inspirational. And I love the guy that did the watch. Oh yeah, he oh yeah, awesome oh yeah. Job. He, he made me want to go join and, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm past that stage of joining, but I could definitely tell uh, young boys and girls that it is an honorable thing to do and that you will never regret the service that you rendered for your country and your fellow Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For being, I'm sorry, with the wrong finger here. Have That's a all great right. day. Thank, Thank you. you. Do the same. Hey, Mr. Watchman. Mr. Watchman. Mr. Watchman. Mr. Watchman. Yes, ma'am. Could you speak a little bit on today? I love your... Uh, the, uh, oh, the watch? Yeah, the watch. The, the, the rest, the, the, whatever you want to call it. He did an awesome job of it. Honoring uh, uh, Rosamond Johnson. Johnson. Talk, talk a little bit about it. You're live. I'm live. Talk about the watch or Rosemont John the event. Rosemont the event. Yeah. How so you feel I was about it all? absolutely. So I'm of course I'm born here. I'm a native of Pensacola, Florida, and I can remember as a kid. As a military man. As a military man yes. now, but then as a kid, uh, wanting to go to the beach and I always coming to Johnson Beach and Johnson Beach, and I just never knew the story of of Johnson Beach. Didn't know what it was. Uh, I just knew it was a beach, you know, my parents would say, this is the beach that we go to. That's and that's exactly. all they would say. Exactly. And so we'd come out here, we'd have fun, and it wasn't until maybe five or six years ago uh, that I found out about what Johnson Beach is. Rosamond Johnson um, joined the military, joined the Army at age 15, and uh, got killed in action at age 17. And when I heard that and being here in Pensacola all my life, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I had no idea. Yeah. And more people should know it. So now they have, as you know, every first Saturday of May, so we hope we see you next Saturday exactly. at 10 a.m., we come out and we honor, we give honor to whom honor is due. Exactly. The family comes out, military member comes out, it gets bigger bigger and bigger every year the story keeps getting spread and so my contribution is I come and I do uh, what's called the watch and the watch it's a Marine Corps I'm, I'm a Marine it's Marine Corps Navy thing where we stand to watch we make sure that everybody's taken care of 
people are sleeping in bed, but there's somebody always standing to watch. Somebody is going over here doing things like that, but there's always somebody standing to watch. So while you're asleep, while you're going through your day-to-day, -day, trust me, there's somebody in the military who's always standing to watch to make sure that you can have those freedoms that we so easily take for granted. And Rosamond Johnson stood the watch and he paid the ultimate sacrifice and that's why we give him honor year after year. So we hope that you see you again. Mark your calendars right now. First Saturday in May 2023 out here at Rosamond Johnson Beach. We'll see you then. Thank you so much. Awesome. Again, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Want to get some shots of the beach out there? And then we're going to go up where the people are. As you see, Johnson Beach is beautiful as ever. And it's a beautiful day at Johnson Beach. That's what makes it so lovely. Everybody's out here. It doesn't matter who you are. Everyone's out here enjoying the beauty of Johnson Beach and what private Roseman Johnson uh, represent by honoring him. Uh, we're going to go up here where, the key, where they are. They're up here finna eat now. give it to the different organizations and let them know about this beautiful beach. Continue to spread the word. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Thank you I so much. It. Hi guys, how y'all yeah. doing? Yeah. Did y'all enjoy the ceremony? Yeah. And who am I speaking with? I'm Steve Williams. Steve Williams. I grew up in the same neighborhood with the Johnson family. Can you talk a little bit about the family? Okay, I was along with Linda, who was one of the younger brothers. And uh, actually, we were a member of the state championship basketball team at Washington High School together. Oh, okay. But uh, we were, I guess, we, we were on the corner of Cole and the Rue, and they were in the next street over from the Rue was Belmont, and so they were between Cole and A. And so to get to their house, instead of walking around the block, we go through the yard, jump the fence, and we end up in their yard. <laughs> and so, so we were all, our families were very, very close. My grandmother owned a beautiful car right there on the corner of Cole and uh, in the end. And so, um, but the families were very, very close. And I knew everybody except for Lord when he was before he came. But Richard, all the way down to myself, I mean, we were all like brothers. Well, that is great. Thank you yeah, so much for being here again. Y'all guys have a great year, too. You too.
Now this is another one of the uh, family members. Adopted family, Adopted member. family member. Tell them your name. Joseph Perry. Tell us about uh, Johnson's family. The history, a little bit or something. Anything that you want to add to it besides everyone has talked about? Yeah, other than uh, the, uh, I'm the one who did the historical documentation. I was a national park. park came down from New York and came and put everything together and made the national park aware of Rosemont. And oh. then we archived it in the National Archive in Washington, D.C. Myself and the historian for the National Park, okay. uh, David Ogden. And if we go to the National Park historical, uh, historical site and look for Rosemont Johnson Beach, you'll see my name. And, David Ogden has documented, and then after that we took off. The first year we did it right in this area. Uh, we first brought the family together to the park, and we always it was a battle between the park, and we finally got everything in place. So, well, that's good. So, uh, and the ceremony was awesome today. Oh, it was. And awesome. we, we appreciate everything. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm here and, and, uh, to give you a heads up. And, and I said before, there's now a Rosemont Johnson family. Rosemont Johnson Jr. Family Foundation, which is a foundation three organization, that the address of the organization is going to be made out of the home. Oh, congrats! Uh, I'm going to be we're going to be updating, and on the board is the brothers, all the brothers on the board. Oh, I tell you, congratulations! Yeah. Thank you so much, here. Okay, tell Vernon, I say, hang in there. Tell Vernon, tell him, you tell him, say, hey, tell him, hey. Hey, Vernon. <laughs> hang in there, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Pamela Glenn, Johnson Glenn, and I am the niece of Roseman Johnson Jr. He, uh, my dad was the second born of my grandmother, and his name was Richard Johnson, but we celebrate every year this memory. It's a way for our family to make sure that his memory is carried on along with our family. Awesome. And, and I tell you, it seems like every year it gets bigger and bigger. Well, actually, because a lot of our family were not here today because okay. there were other things that the kids were in that they had to attend. Okay. Because we come from a large family. It's a lot of us. Uh, how many is in the family? Do you know maybe by Well, family? I will tell you this. My grandmother saw five generations. Wow. And she was a hundred when she passed away. She died. It was a lot of you guys. She died two months before her hundred and first birthday. Oh my goodness. So out of the nine kids, there were three left, but we they all like I was telling another lady, she was talking to me and I'm like, there are a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandmother too have seen five generations exactly. to tell you because and y'all keep the name moving on and yes. inspiring and honoring uh Rosen. Yes, exactly. So that was your uncle. That was my dad. Yeah. Well we thank him for what he has done all of us. And it was an honor to be here today uh to uh talk to people about uh your uncle. Because many don't know. Exactly. It's good for them to know because at one point in time when I was a child, this was the only beach we could attend. Exactly. But then to know why it was named after like she was talking about, you know, Allison was talking about the little small sign and one of the storms took it away and everything. Exactly. So when she did that, that was just an awesome. Took off. My grandmother made her so much. Yeah, yeah. She was just enjoying that. She loved it. Oh, So they have this food here. Oh, my family. Look, like Commissioner May said, he grew up she cooks all the time. And it's like, she was cooking all the time. That's the way she cooked. And when she baked, we just loved it because we had all the cakes and all the food. And you could just eat. It was my grandmother's thing. Like, it's always better to have more than enough. Exactly. Thank you so much. Here, we're going to go down here to the brother. He's on the ground. How you doing? How you doing? I just want to say it was a pleasure meeting you guys in the family. Okay. And I, and I, I met Mom Elba finally. I'll let her know what happened. Huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever, okay? All right. Enjoy the day. Oh, my God. I know you back here cooking. Just say hey to 
everyone and thank them for coming out. We're still hey. live. Uh, uh, Vernon Thank you for coming out. We see you guys here on the grill. Thank you, Vernon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for all the help. Okay. Number one, Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank all you. Right. You're welcome so much. They got uh, french fries and fish and hush puppies. And so uh, if you're not busy, you can Oh, okay, so everything's gonna be over here? Yes, yeah, over there now. Okay, yeah. Thank you. It smells good, guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna close it out. Uh, and we're gonna get us something to eat. Uh, the event is over. We're gonna have a little here coming in. And they're uh, enjoying themselves. And they're eating and greeting and eating. So uh, I'm gonna give this back to Vernon Watson at WBQ. WRNE Radio, Mr. Mountain. Thank you for coming out to Johnson Beach. We were honoring uh, Roseman Johnson, private Roseman Johnson today. Okay? Bye bye.